Hey everyone, this is Braden with Pickleball Effect. Today we're taking a look at the new paddle from Diadem. This is the Warrior Edge. Diadem has already released a different paddle called the Warrior, but this one is different. I'm not really sure why they're, why they're sticking with the Warrior name. The only thing this shares with the original Warrior is the shape. Other than that, everything else is, is very different. So when we're talking about the shape, it's, this, it's a standard elongated shape, 16 half inches long by seven and a half inches wide. This is gonna give you a little extra reach. Then when the handle is five inches long. I would have liked to have seen the handle at five and a quarter or even five and a half inches. The elongated paddles are a little dead here at the bottom, so it doesn't really hurt to make the handle longer. Longer handles have some benefits like added power and additional spin, but they stayed at the, the five inch length handle there. And then they're also using the same handle taper technology that they introduced with the original diadem. What that is, is just a skinnier handle, even though it has a thicker core. So typically you have a really big handle when you have thicker cores like this. This is 16 millimeters thick, but the grip uh, is four and, a, four and a quarter inches, which feels very comfortable and I like that. And then when we're talking about the facing material, this is a raw carbon fiber facing. Some of the more popular paddles on the market right now from Yola, Gage, Carbon, and Electrum all use this same or something similar to this facing material. So they're uh, kind of taking advantage of the popularity of this, uh, which I don't mind. I'm a big fan of this facing material. The grit is built into the, the facing layer, which means it's gonna last longer and give you more spin. Their original Warrior had some spray on grit and that stuff just wears out quick and just doesn't work as well. But there are a couple of things that make this different than uh, some of the other paddles on the market that use the same material. One of them is the core. So it's a, it's a thicker core, but they're using a denser honeycomb, meaning they have more honeycomb cells packed into the core, which should give it a firmer feel and make it play differently compared to the other paddles that use the same facing material. Additionally, they're introducing their aero guard technology. So it's basically just some grooves that they've added to the edge guard. They said it's supposed to make it a little more aerodynamic. I really don't know how much that will do, uh, but every little bit helps, so I like that. Last thing I'll mention is the weight. So this comes in at about eight ounces, which is much lighter than the original Warrior. So here's the, the Diadem Warrior Edge. Let's go put it on the court and see how it plays. After drilling and playing with the Edge for over two weeks, here's my review of its performance. I'm categorizing this one as an all-court paddle. The paddle had a crisp, light, and semi-hard feeling to it, and it was a little poppy out of the box. But after a week of drilling and playing with it nearly every day, it broke in and that semi-hard feeling went away and it was replaced with a softer, more plush feel. You notice real quick that it has a high spin rating and it joins the ranks of many other raw carbon fiber paddles that also have higher spin ratings. You can see the ball dip a little more on your serves, drives, and rolls at the net. It's a nice asset to have. When it came to attacking, it had a little more pop than I expected and was slightly jumpy off the face. It's not a power paddle, but it had more power than Diadem's original Warrior. It's a mid-weight paddle at about eight ounces, but it is well balanced and moves easily in your hands. I never felt behind the ball in hands battles and it was easy to accelerate through the ball with any stroke. The extra spin is a nice asset when generating offense. My top spin and slice stinks all had a little more on them, which put extra pressure on the other team. I felt confident attacking balls below the net when I needed to, and its decent pop was enough to put the ball away when I got the chance. It was a good combination of spin and speed and decent power that enabled offense well. It played very similar to the Carbon 1 16mm if you've ever played that one. Talking about the soft game now, it has a good sized sweet spot for an elongated paddle. I thought it was more forgiving than the original Warrior. I liked the feel of it, though for some reason I never felt 100% in tune with it. I could execute my soft shots in most cases, but I wasn't totally sure when I hit a good one or if I popped it up a little. My dinks, drops from the midcourt, and blocks all performed well. However, I never quite connected to my thirds. I kept floating those more than normal during the entire two weeks I played with it. This might be the first paddle I've played with that I could take pace off the ball well with blocks, but didn't have that same touch with my thirds. I think if I kept playing with the paddle, I'd get my thirds and fill with the paddle down, but it didn't come to me like I wanted it to in the first two weeks I played with it. I wanted to compare the Warrior with the Warrior Edge head to head, so let's look at that. The Edge is not meant to replace the Warrior, but it's just another paddle in their lineup. Arbitrarily, I felt like the Edge had more power than the Warrior, so I pulled out my speed gun to see what the difference was. My average speed with the Warrior was 42 miles per hour on serves, while the Edge was 45 miles per hour on average. That's just about a 7% increase in power. The Warrior offers better control and enhanced stability, while the Edge has more attacking ability and spin with a little less control. Comparing the Edge to other similar and popular elongated raw carbon fiber paddles out there, here's how I would rank each paddle against each other. A lot of these comparisons are really close, but I did my best. 
I thought it came in at three on the control side. It only beat the carbon because it's more forgiving. The Electrum is the clear winner for control here. On the forgiveness front, none of these have tiny sweet spots, but I gave it third place. For spin, I put it as a tie with carbon, though the Yola and Electrum are not far behind. It was difficult to rank them for spin since they all perform well in this category. For power, the Yola and Carbon take spots 1 and 2, while the Edge comes in the 3rd spot and Electrum is the clear 4th spot on this one. So here's my recommendation. I think this is a good all around paddle, but I didn't feel like there was anything that significantly differentiated it from other raw carbon fiber paddles I've played. It's priced within $10 of the Carbon and Electrum and $30 cheaper than the Yola Hyperion. If you know you want a raw carbon fiber face paddle, then picking one might come down to the small things like grip size, weight, and looks when deciding which one you want. Fortunately for Diadem, this paddle looks really cool and so they have that going. The Edge has a nice combo of spin, speed, and decent power that improves your attacking ability. It has a nice feel that is controllable in most cases, though I never felt completely in tune with my thirds. If you're looking for a good all-court paddle that has a high spin rating and is maneuverable, then this should be an option you consider. However, if you're looking for something similar but offers a bit more control, then I'd look at Diadem's original Warrior paddle or the Electrum Model E. So there you go. That's my review. Thanks for watching and I hope it helped.